Okay, in this uh, movie we want to look at Newton's universal law of gravitation, probably one of the most important equations that we have in physics. Um, this relates, this equation here relates um, the force, right here we see the force, um, the force between any two uh, bodies, any two objects. And um, the force, uh, and so this is sometimes confusing to people because a lot of times people think that the only thing that provides force are like really big objects like like the earth and it, it provides force and it pulls it has a pulling force a gravitational force on various things but this is uh, and this is the case but it's also the case that any two objects you take a rock and you take another rock and they could be small rocks there is a force that exists between them and the force is the same. So this rock pulls on this force, that, or pulls on this rock with a certain force, with the same amount of force that this rock would pull on on this rock. And the way that we calculate that force is to use this equation. And so we have um, the force between any two objects is equal to this constant, which is called the universal gravitational constant. And uh, that's just a constant that uh, Newton. Uh, Learn that he had to put into his equation um, so that uh, the force would um, would always be calculated correctly, and that that constant is six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven. Six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven. We'll look at that here in a little bit a little bit more in a second, but you'll need to kind of remember that constant. Um, so then it's the product of the masses. So if you take the mass of this object in kilograms and you multiply it by the mass of this object in kilograms, that's how you get the top part of your numerator. And then you divide it by r squared, or sometimes this is d squared. Either way is fine. And this distance is the distance between the centers of the two objects. The distance between the center of, centers of masses of both of the objects. So r squared or d squared. But the most important thing to remember there is this is an inverse square law. You need to square that, um, that distance. So then what we see here in this equation is that force is proportional to 1 over the distance squared between the two objects. So if you move ob two objects further and further apart, then the force is gonna, between them is going to be less by the square of the distance. So it's proportional to 1 over the square of the distance. Okay, um, so if we look at this, uh, if we look at this constant here again, this g, this g constant, um, g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And I'd like to know what, what do you think the units are for this constant? There's actually units for this constant. If you want, you can pause the movie and try to figure that out before I go on. So if I, the way I figure out the units for this is I just take this equation and I rearrange it for g. So g would equal force times uh, r squared or d squared um, over um, mass times mass. And uh, so what units do I have there? Well, a force is in newtons. And a radius or a distance squared would be meters squared. And then on the bottom, I have a mass times a mass. That'd be a kilograms times a kilograms. So that'd be a kilograms squared. Of course, I need this whole thing in MKS. And if you remember a Newton, F equals MA from the last video, was a kilogram meter per second squared. So instead of this N, I want to put in this. So I'm going to have kilogram times meter times a meter squared all over seconds squared um, kilogram squared. So I put kgm over s squared in for my Newton right there and I got kgm over s squared times m squared over kg squared. And you'll see that this whole thing then right here simplifies I'm gonna have a on the top I'm gonna to have a m times m squared to be in meters cubed kilograms gonna cancel out I'm gonna get a second squared on the bottom uh, kilogram so there's my ugly units for G there's no other unit we're gonna sub in for that that's just the units for 
the gravitational constant. 6.67 times 10 to the minus, minus 11. Okay, um, so let's do a problem here with this. Let's, uh, let's look at... Uh, um, Okay, let's just let's just make up a problem here. Let's say I want to know the average. So here's uh, Earth. Let's say this is Earth right here, and uh, over here is uh, Mars. Okay, and uh, the the uh, mass of the Earth, the mass of the Earth, and you'll just have to kind of remember this one. We'll say is uh, six times ten to the twenty fourth kilograms. And the mass of Mars, we'll say, is 6.42 times 10 to the uh, 23rd kilograms. And we'll say the distance between their centers, all the way from this, from the Earth to Mars here, didn't draw that very good, but is uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 8th uh, kilometers distance. So I want to figure out what is the force, what's the average force? I have to say average force because Mars and Earth are not always this exact distance apart. They're in orbit, so sometimes they're a long ways apart, and sometimes they're uh, in conjunction or really close together. So if I want to figure out the force between these two, um, I will take my g, which is 6.67 e negative 11. That's my g constant times the mass of uh, one of these, we'll take the mass, times the mass of the Earth. So we'll say times 6e24 kilograms, um, times the mass of Mars, so we'll say 6.42e23 uh, kilograms. And we're gonna divide that whole thing by the distance between them squared. We got to be careful. The masses are in kilograms. Those were right. But this distance is always supposed to be in meters and right now it's in kilometers. So instead of 1.5 E8, we're going to use 1.5 E11 because that will be three more zeros. That'll make it in meters. And we cannot forget that we need to square this. This is what people always uh, tend to forget. So the force between Earth and Mars will be the constant times the masses divided by the distance between them in meters squared. And if you uh, put that all on your calculator, you should get something like 1.14 times 10 to the 16. And what are our units? What are the units for force? They are newtons. So there'd be a lot of force between these two, two planets. And it was because of this law that sometimes we could figure out when there, uh, if there were planets that seem to be messing up the orbits between other planets, then we could figure out from this law where a certain planet would be located that was causing the perturbations in the, uh, in the orbits. So um, this is how we actually kind of found where Pluto was because um, there were strange uh, anomalies in the um, orbits of like Neptune. So uh, we can use Newton's universal law of gravitation to figure out force between any two objects. Now, if these two objects are really small, like uh, maybe a, a pencil and a pen, these would be really, really, really tiny masses. And so therefore, the force is going to be really, 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 really small. So small that it's almost zero. And that's why we can't really tell that there's force between two small objects. The only time where the force becomes really, really noticeable is if one of the objects is like extremely massive. And we're talking like massive on the planetary scale. So one of the objects pretty much has to be about a planet before you can actually sense with your senses the force that's pulling, pulling you uh, towards it. Um, we can measure the force of very, very small objects, uh, but... Uh, you, know, you can't really sense the force with your senses unless one of the objects is really, really huge. Okay, so let's just see if we understand the uh, formula here with uh, some several questions. Let's say, um, what would happen if we, uh, what would happen to the force if we doubled one of the masses? So let's say we doubled 
one of the masses. So I'm going to put a 2 in front of m1. If we doubled one of the masses, what would happen to the force? So I'm going to ask you a series of questions like this, and then you can pause it, try to answer it, and then you'll see if you're right. So if I doubled one of the masses, I, I put a 2 in, in front of this two times this whole thing. So that means that my force also would be times 2. So my force should double if I doubled one of the masses. I've kept everything else constant and doubled one of the masses. The force should also double. Okay, next question. What would happen to the force if I doubled one of the masses and tripled the other one? You can pause. Okay, so if I double one of the mass and I triple the other one, 2 times 3 would be 6. My force will be times 6. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 6 times the amount of force if I doubled one of the masses and tripled the other one. All right, question 3. What happens to the force if I quadrupled the distance between the two objects? I keep the masses the same, but I quadruple the distance between the two objects. Okay, uh, so in this case, I'm instead of like having a distance between them of like, I can just say one, I will instead have a distance between them of four, four times the distance. So what happens to my force? Well, force is proportional to one over distance squared. It's proportional, I should write it as. So that means it'd be proportional to one over four squared, which would be one over 16. So if I quadruple the distance between two masses, obviously the force is going to be less. You take two objects and move them apart, the force is going to be less. So in this case, it would be one sixteenth of the amount of the original force between the objects. If I move two objects four times farther apart, then my force will be one sixteenth that of the original. One over four squared would be one sixteenth. Okay, uh, next question. What happens, what happens to the force if you double the mass of each object and double the distance between them? What would happen if I doubled the mass of each object and doubled the distance between them? Okay, so if I double the distance of each, or double the mass of each, that'd be a two in front of there, and there'd be a two in front of there. And if I doubled the distance between them, that would be a 2 in for my r. So what happens if I double the masses of both? Well, that should mean that I have 4 times the amount of force. But what happens if I double the distance between them? Well, force would be proportional to 1 over d squared, would be 1 over 2 squared, would be 1 fourth. So although I would 4 times the force by doubling each mass, I would take one-fourth of the force by, by doubling the distance between them. So it's a wash. I would have the exact same amount of force that if I kept these two masses and kept the same distance between them, if I doubled each mass and doubled the distance between them, I'm going to have the exact same amount of force. Kind of a tricky question. Okay, last question. What happens to the force if you triple one mass... I'm going to triple one mass. I'm going to quadruple the other mass. Quadruple the other mass. And I'm going to double the distance between them. I'm going to double the distance between them. So you'll see on the top, I, would, I should have 12 times the amount of force. 3 times 4 would be 12 times the amount of force. But I'm going to double the distance between them, which means I'm going to have 1 fourth the amount of original force. So how much force I'm going to have? What happens if I triple a mass, quadruple a mass, and double the distance between them? I'm going to have three times the amount of force that I would have um, if I didn't do all of these things. So three times the amount of force. Okay, hopefully that kind of really helps you with uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation. And hopefully you understand kind of the relationships that this is what we call an inverse square law. The force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two bodies.